Is ChatGPT going to take over some jobs? The answer is ChatGPT4 is finally here and it's literally scarier than ever. You can just draw something on a piece of paper and give it to it and it will create a website out of it. You can just sketch your website, upload the image, take a picture with your phone and then ChatGPT will take over the rest and it will generate a website out of this scratch. I think some people are going to lose their jobs, including me. But don't worry about that. So welcome to this new video. This is Alibu again. So if you're new to my channel, just go ahead, so hit the subscribe button and join me in my YouTube channel. So in this video, I want to showcase the new version of ChatGPT, which is now the ChatGPT4. And it's more advanced than the Ch than the ChatGPT 3.5 or what, what we know ChatGPT 3. Also, ChatGPT now is able to understand pictures. So you can just give it a picture, ask a question about that picture, and it will automatically understand and give you the answer about that. And also the really funny thing about ChatGPT that for demonstrating it, they gave it uh, a set of pictures and they asked it ju just to say the joke out of that one. And it was mind blowing, really mind blowing. So now let's go through the, the UI of ChatGPT4 and let's see the changes. And also I will show you how I'm how am I using the ChatGPT as a software developer and how this tool is making my life much, much, much easier. So first of all, we have or we see that this is the UI. It's just like the old one. But in order to access the ChatGPT4, you need a ChatGPT Plus, which is a sub subscription. It's not that cheap. It's $20 per month but it will give you access to the to this powerful tool. So the first change in the UI right here, so for the moment, I really don't know why, but the history is not available, but it's okay. And also here, if you don't have the subscription, you will see here like to to uh, upgrade to the to the plus or the, to, to the chat GPT plus. But now when you upgrade, you will see this drop down right here, it will give you three options, which is the default the chat GPT 3.5 and the legacy and also chat GPT four. So we can see right here that, it, that the default one for the reasoning, it has three uh, out of five for the speed, it's five of the, out of five, which is really fast. And the consciousness it's two out of five. Same for the legacy, it's a bit, um, it's a three out of five for the reasoning, the speed is slower, and for the consistency, it's only one out of five. But the ChatGPT4, it's five out of five for reasoning, and just two for the speed. Okay, it's not that, it's not a big deal, being not fast as, uh, as the default one, but the consciousness and the reasoning is much, much higher. So let's select ChatGPT4 and then you will see this message right here that the ChatGPT4 currently has a cap of 25 messages every three hours. So expect significantly lower caps as we adjust for demand. So this means that you have a kind of limitation. When it was first released, it was 100 message every four hours and now it was uh, decreased to 25 message every three hours. So you only have a threshold of 24, 25 messages every three hours. All right, but this is, I guess this is fine. For me personally, I use ChatGPT. I, I already started with ChatGPT3 when it was released and I'm using it mainly as a co-worker. <laughs> yes, it's, it's a co-worker for me. So I'm almost asking ChatGPT every day. I'm talking with it, getting some ideas, uh, try to talk with ChatGPT. Uh, even for my YouTube videos, I sometimes uh, ask for, uh, I prepare, for example, the idea or the script, and then I ask some for, for some things or like what's missing or what I can add as a plus for that video. And it's the results are really, really amazing. So today I want to show you for us as software engineers, how we can use ChatGPT in order to improve our daily life and make our coding faster and faster and also improve the quality. So I can, like, I can also go through all the details and the new stuff with ChatGPT4, but I guess there are a lot of YouTube videos explaining that. So I will invite you just to go search for it. And 
Yeah, but the most important part, I want to focus on our daily life and how this tool can make our life much, much easier. One thing, like one question everyone has been asking, is ChatGPT going to take over some jobs? The answer is yes. But for me personally, I'm not scared about ChatGPT, but I'm, I'm really happy to have ChatGPT in our life and having this powerful tool available for us today because really it's a game changer. It's a real game changer. And if you use it in the correct way, it will make your life much, much easier and it will improve also your skills. But it for me, it will never, well, for the present moment, it will never take the software engineers jobs because it's smart to generate code it can generate really code really good code and really clean code well clean code but uh, the thing is you always need some human being or some software developer to solve the problem or like to verify the generated code also it was proven that chat gpt is smart for for example uh, resolving some lead code problems, it was able to, to easily solve the easy ones. But when we speak about the medium and the high level or the hard assessments, it was not able to generate a good results or even to pass, uh, to pass the test. I think it might, it might be improved in the future, but for the moment we are secure and we can keep our jobs. All right. So what I will be testing today with ChatGPT4 is I want to give it one of my code. It's, it's a quite, uh, it's not that old, but it's a bit old code and I will ask it to generate some tests for it. And also I will ask it to generate some documentation for this code. All right. So I, I have it on my, um, on my GitHub right here. I will just copy it, copy paste it. I will just copy everything. And here I will ask it, do you understand this code? And now I will paste it and then I will hit enter. So also one thing now let's wait until it finish uh, generating. And you can see that the speed that it, it understands this code is really, really amazing. It's impressive. One eternity later. Oh my God. It understands all the code and every part of it, which this is, this is impressive. And like, finally here, it says that the code also contains uh, various validation checks and error handling to ensure that the service works as expected. So now let's give it another question. All right. So now give me or generate some unit tests for this class and use only Mokitu. So I wanted to generate tests using only Mokitu to generate the unit tests. So it starts and now let's wait again. One eternity later. Oh my God. It really understands each line and every line of the code that I provided. Even my code, it was written as a mix between French and English but it still understands. So here, for example, this quantity or this field right here, it's called quantity. This is in French, but it still understands everything and memorizing everything. This is really mind blowing guys. This is, oh my God. All right. So let's uh, continue checking. But now I want to go through, for example, the first method. So this one, it says that it should save article successfully article it's uh, it's a product by the way so here it's creating an instance of my article dto and setting everything and then we have also this two entity or like the article entity and then it's mocking when article repository dot save any article dot class wow this is the code i would write <laughs> to test this class uh, or this method so then return article and then you have the result asserting not null and asserting equals. Well, this is really mind blowing. And here it says should throw an valid entity exception when saving a valid article. Okay. So I would also write the same method name. So I, I don't know, is ChatGPT reading my mind? 
I'm not sure about that. So, okay, here we have an empty article and then it will assert throws that uh, this exception, which is a custom exception that I created within that project. And then when we call the save, we are expecting this to throw an exception. And I want to show you that this is what I or what I already implemented for that. So this save method, so here if we have errors, like we are calling this validator, and if we have an error, then we are throwing an valid entity exception. Oh my God, so this is so true. And okay, we can tell it to continue or we can even stop here. So let's tell it to continue and it will continue generating code. This is this is really this is really mind blowing. All right, so next step is I will ask it to generate some documentation or like to document this code. One eternity later. Okay, so we have all the tests generated. Well, I, I will not go through all of them, so not to waste time, but this is pretty much impressive, pretty much amazing. This is really, really mind blowing. So now I will ask it, can you generate some documentation for the, I will ask just for the save method. I just want to see the result for the save method. So here is a detailed documentation for the save method in the article service implementation. So I didn't ask or I didn't men mention where it is, but the good thing it has some kind of memory Oh, <laughs> yes, I think it has some kind of memory that which makes it able to remember what 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 you mentioned already in the chat. So here it's generating this the documentation because for us, this is the most awful part for us as developers is writing tests and also writing documentations. But this is going to change your life just go and use ChatGPT. All right, so this is this is this is pretty amazing. This is really amazing. Now I will ask it to stop generating. Wow, it's just describing literally the function the, or the functionality of this method. This is this is amazing. This is really amazing. Now I will I will give it some a bit uh, harder task. So I will ask it to generate a CI/CD pipeline that should do testing, uh, building, and packaging, and then creating uh, creating and build, building a Docker image, and finally deploying the the jar file or the generated application to AWS Beanstalk. Generate a CI/CD pipeline using GitHub Actions that should do the following step. So test, I will just give it as dummy as possible. Uh, build and package, uh, build Docker image. And I want to see if this tool is really able to understand what I'm talking about and then publish to Docker Hub and deploy to AWS Beanstalk. All right, so I want to see if this tool is capable to, uh, of understanding uh, what, I, what I ask because I just asked, I didn't mention uh, anything. I just want to, uh, to see if understands based off the basic chat Okay, so wait, uh, I, I just forgot what I was talking about because it's it's really, it's really amazing. So it says in your GitHub repository, create a new file called blah, 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 add the following content to the main file. So, okay, name CICD pipeline on push to branch main. It knows that my main branch or the branch is called main. Wow. <laughs> All right, so jobs building. Okay, I, I didn't ask it to do a checkout, but it knows that implicitly to run a GitHub action job or step, you need first to check out the code. So here it's taken by default Java 17. I could have mentioned that I want it to be Java, uh, sorry, it's taken Java 11, but I could have mentioned that it should be using Java 17, but this this one we can, we can change manually. Also, it's, wow, it's also caching uh, Maven packages. And then test and build, Maven clean package. Oh, oh my God. All right. 
Okay, so here, that that's why I mentioned, that's why I mentioned that don't trust this tool 100% when you ask it to generate some code. So here I ask just to test, like what I wanted is to have a step for testing and another step for packaging. But here what it's doing is just cleaning and packaging. Okay, we can also do it. It's also possible because when we clean and package or when we run the MVM package command, it will also run the tests, but I wanted to have two separate tests for, for this. Let's continue here, building Docker image. It's a different job, which is okay, it's good. So yeah, set up build X and then logging to Docker Hub and then building and pushing. And finally it's deploying to Beanstalk and it's also using the checkout again and configuring AWS credentials. This is what I will do also. This is what I would do also to, to, to run this. Oh my God, this is, this is amazing. And finally, it, it's giving us some things or some steps to change what we generated. Like here, because for example, the secrets and all like the variables that it's using, it say that you need to change your Docker Hub username using your image name. It's talking about this one. So we need to change this manually. And if you give it to it since the beginning, it will also generate it. So, Yes, um, I'm, I'm really losing words. I'm really losing words. So this is, this is pretty, this is pretty amazing. This is really nice. So, uh, yeah, I, I wanted also to show you how I'm using uh, ChatGPT in my daily life. Also ChatGPT and especially the ChatGPT4 is capable of detecting bugs. And I will make a video, if you want to just go ahead, comment out, and I will make a video about that, how you can give some buggy code. And I will show you and demonstrate how ChatGPT is capable of detecting these bugs and even fixing these bugs for you. But as I mentioned, always be careful about that. Don't trust ChatGPT 100% because it still cannot replace you. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're new to my channel, just go ahead, hit the subscribe button. I don't know if it's gonna pop up here or here, but hit the subscribe button. Also give me a thumbs up so I can continue on producing and, cre and creating content like this for you guys. So thank you so much for your time and see you next time.